welcome to LARPgasm. For those of you just joining us, please be sure to check out part one of this video. For those of you continuing on, thanks for not leaving me hanging, and please enjoy the exciting conclusion to this video. So unfortunately, I don't think the original piece of wood is going to make it through this. Uh, when I cracked it open and mold all over it, I tried to eliminate that, and I think I did a good job. Unfortunately, this wood is very cracked, and it's warped, and uh, just not in very good condition. Plus, it's really chewed up from the staples. Uh, it doesn't surprise me. There's a tag on the bottom of this saying something like 1929 on it. So, um, I don't know if the upholstery was that old, but if the chair itself and the wood is that old, you know, we're talking about 85 year old pieces of wood. I mean, there's no way this is gonna support me. Luckily, I have this, part of my miniature gaming setup um, that I use for terrain, and it's a nice thick wood, and uh, we're going to go ahead and lose this quadrant of the gaming space so that I can make my chair. So, real simple, all we're going to do is take the old one, line it up. Draw our pattern, get the jigsaw out, and cut it. And I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so I traced out my <clears throat> pattern on this wood using a pencil. Now we're going to jigsaw it. So now we've got our two matching boards. So now if you wanted to, you could stack these for added strength or you could just use that, depending on how the chair is laid out. Since it's got a little sort of uh, <clears throat> raised area, I'm just gonna use this one. If it was a recessed area, I might consider using both just for added support, but I don't see any reason to include the original because it's in such bad shape. So we're just gonna move right onto this. I'm gonna stain the bottom of this. I'm going to clean it up with sandpaper so it looks nice and smooth. Even though it's going to be covered, we don't want any jagged edges. And uh, from there, since it's already stained, really the next step is going to be to get some foam and upholster this thing. <clears throat> as far as when you cut these out, don't worry if it's not 100% exact. Uh, it's going to be close enough. Plus, once it's upholstered, it probably won't really matter anyhow. So I got my foam. For the seat, I had to buy this bigger piece because the seat itself was too big for the little bit less expensive version. So I got this big piece of foam. I'm gonna cut it out. Yeah, I mean, you can use your foam lathe, you can use your bandsaw, your jigsaw, um, electric knife, scissors, whatever you gotta use. I might use an electric knife or a bandsaw, I have to see. But uh, whatever's gonna be faster and easier is what I'll go with. Once I get the pattern transferred on, I got two inch for the seat and half an inch for the back. I think what we'll do is do double that up to make it one inch on the back and then a half an inch on the very back of the chair. You'll see what I mean when I'm all done. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, let's go ahead and get this transferred and start cutting. If it's not obvious, always take one of the factory straight sides and use that as one of your ends. So that way that's one less line you have to cut <clears throat> nice and straight. There's no other straight lines on this particular piece, so this is the best way to do this. I'm using two inch foam because I think anything higher than that wouldn't have worked very well with this chair. I think when this chair started its life, it probably used two inch foam and it just compressed over the years. So this should give us uh, just enough cushion and the fabric won't have to stretch over too much space. We'll go ahead and put this in the corner here. And then from there, it's real simple. It's just tracing onto the foam and then cutting it out. Or you could just cut it out using this as your template. But if you're using something really aggressive like a saw, be careful you don't cut your wood that you've sanded because you don't want to mess up this. Boom. 
would suggest using a bandsaw or a foam lathe or foam saw on this. This will get the job done. It takes a lot more time than you know you really want to spend though probably. So <clears throat> if you have something better than this, use it. I just want to use this to show that you don't need big power tools to make this happen. Perfect. The next step is going to be to hit this up with some sort of spray adhesive. I suggest Super 77 or something along those lines. All you're going to do is just spray this down, line this up perfectly, and attach it. That way, whenever you're sitting, you don't have to worry about this foam moving on you. It's just going to make the whole thing more stable. I'm going to do this outside. I don't think you need to see me spray that. Super simple. Just get even coverage. Make sure everything's lined up. Push it together. This is unforgiving and it cures very fast, so you better make sure that you get it on there real quick. Once those are mated, you have one solid piece. This will help stop the foam from moving on you over the years. <clears throat> Keep everything in place while you're upholstering it. Basically, it's just a repeat for the back of the chair. We're gonna get the foam, uh, cut it to size, glue it down on the front, double it up on the front because I want this to be thicker and then because the back of the chair shows through we're going to also foam the back of it as well but only with half inch thick and I'll show you what that looks like when it's all done here in a minute this backing foam is so thin you can actually cut it with scissors so I'm actually just going to cut this piece out so you might be able to do scissors if you're not using real thick foam If you do a good job cutting, you'll have some excess. The excess can be used for other weapons or costumes or whatever, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make another one of these and then glue them down. Unfortunately, I ran short on regular foam, so I'm gonna use this camp pad foam. That'll be actually my first layer of backing with the soft foam on top. That way I still get two layers. It's gonna be about an inch thick and I can still do foam on the back of the chair. Okay, so we're going to move on to actually upholstering. Now the rule here is more is better because you can't add on once you cut off. So you need to have enough fabric that's gonna fold up and over. Now I'm doing this backwards because the wood's on the bottom, so I make a nice line whenever I'm folding this. But you're gonna to need to have enough fabric that's gonna come up and over, I'd say by at least probably an inch, so you're able to staple or thumbtack into it, whatever you're doing. Now, if you can sew and you use the original fabric as a pattern and you're sewing, you know, sides onto it and stuff so that's a really custom fit that's great not everyone has time or cares that much i personally don't care when i do this i'm just going to fold the sides down over and staple them on and it's going to look you know a-okay so however you're doing this it's up to you but just make sure you leave a lot of allowance so that you can staple this so up until this point you've had no idea what fabric i'm using i'm actually using a red alligator skin I'm going to call it dragon hide. So now that we got this cut out, really it's just a matter of folding it up, stapling it in place on the corners, folding it over and stapling it, and uh, just making it look good. Staples are forgiving, so if you mess it up, pull them out, try again. Like I said, the important thing is just making sure you have enough fabric so that it folds over the piece. I'm going to go ahead and do that now <clears throat> because it may be a little bit time consuming here and uh, see how it comes out. I'll show you when it's all done. And so if you've done a good job, this is basically what you turn out with. So you've got a upholstered seat, nice and plush. I left a protective cover on for now. This just peels off. So we've got one side done here. Um, now what we're doing is we're doing the back now I have that foamed in but what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the seam down the side this way it's concealed by the edges of the chair so what I'm doing is I'm just folding the fabric over and then running the staples down the side uh, this way we can have it wrapped up real nice everything should be concealed by the actual wood on the chair now if you remember this chair actually initially came with gumdrop buttons now I'm not gonna do these but all you have to do is just glue down some fabric over this and make sure you wrap it around and then make sure you mark your holes on the back of your foam and then all you would do is just punch holes through 
draw your buttons through, and then staple them off or tie them off. Because this is like a vinyl type material, I'm afraid putting any holes in it is gonna cause it to rip over time, so I'm actually just gonna skip and do one solid piece. If you're doing fabric though, you should be fine. Okay, so there it is. Just remember when you're doing this, the staple gun is your friend, okay? Get as many staples in as you feel you are necessary to hold it securely. You don't want it coming apart. And this is basically the finished project, my dragon hide throne, built with mostly found and recycled things. I tried very hard to source that foam, but just wasn't able to, so I had to buy the foam and the alligator hide vinyl, but other than that, it's basically free. You'll be seeing a lot more of this in my dungeon. Now, of course, here's the back of the chair. All right, so basically the only thing left to do is to put these on the bottom, on the legs. Um, real easy to do. This chair is old, doesn't really have these on it. So all you gotta do is just hammer these into the legs. I would suggest pre-drilling small guides so you don't split the legs. In fact, pre-drill it for sure. If there's already a hole, you can probably just shove these in. If not, pre-drill it and uh, punch these in. That way, your chair is going to be nice and level and it'll slide around on the floor. So I got the dragon hide thrown in the dungeon and it's looking good. Can't wait to do some videos from it. If you decide to do an undertaking like this yourself, hey, best of luck. If you do it, I'd love to see a video. I'd love to see how it turns out. There's lots of ways to do this stuff. Uh, I did it the way that I know and feel to be the best. Just make sure if you attempt this undertaking that you measure twice and cut once. Make sure you have a good staple gun that works and make sure you have some space and some time. If you have money to spend, hey, that's good. You can make mistakes. I was trying to use reclaimed items and really did not have any room for error. I had just enough foam and I had just enough fabric to make this happen. Took less than a yard to do this. Still have a little bit left over in case I want to do an additional project. Until next time, adventure on.